Hey guys, this is Magamu, and I'm going to be making a deep breakdown, well-researched video of games that you should be excited about in the upcoming season. And this can include a wide variety of games that I've deeply researched. And I'm going to sound very excited to tell you about these games because I know so much about them. Or I can give you a pretty useless video that's not going to tell you much about the games other than why I'm excited about them. Because my name's on the channel. This video is not going to be that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I put together a list of games that I think I'll be covering on this channel and I thought you guys might be interested in why I think they're interesting and I think you might be interested and why the interesting things that are interesting about this game to me, and you may be interested in why I think they're interesting. I put together a list of about five games. These are mostly online games with one of them. I don't think it's an online game. Like I said, I'm not really uh, that informed on these games, but I thought you might care that um, I'm gonna be covering them because I think it's interesting that I'm gonna cover them. Anyway, here's the list. Um, the first two games, I'm gonna just lump into the same category because they're basically published by DE. And I think one's gonna come out and I don't think the other one is. And that's gonna be Soul Frame and Wayfinder. Now, first of all, Soul Frame. I was gonna go hands in and just deeply cover this game, especially after dang near a decade of covering Warframe. I mean, why not? I covered Warframe for so long, you guys might be interested. It has the same name. I was interested in Soul Frame because it was essentially some of Warframe systems, some of Warframe's monetization, I'm assuming a lot of this stuff, wrapped in the package of a bit of a deeper and possibly more punishing combat system or a combat loop. I think I really love my time spent with Warframe, but if there's anything outside of the cumbersome systems that you have to learn and relearn and just so much content that is uh, material content like characters, weapons that you have to retread to get back into Warframe. Um, I definitely think the thing about Soul Frame is I was excited about what they could possibly do with the combat loop because with Warframe, I'm, I'm not excited to go back to that very often because I think the combat has aged. Um, that whole Dynasty Warriors power fantasy sounds good on paper, but I think it doesn't really translate well to the modern audience and it doesn't really translate to me. Great, great things about Warframe, but I think the choices are, do you tear up the combat system in Warframe, a game that's been around for 10 years and it's got a dedicated player base or do you name another game dang near the same thing have basically the same systems but then you tear the combat system out um i definitely understand why they're making a second game and that's why i am personally interested in it now do i think that soul frame is going to be ready soon heck no um i went and checked their twitter it's basically a bunch of concept art if i had to guess you guys are probably going to be waiting two more years before you even see anything from soul frame um so i wouldn't expect that and i definitely think a game like soul frame is going to take the time even after beta or release or whatever they're going to do to get that game to the point where people respect it like warframe right um uh, to have enough content and systems that people actually care about and refinement so i'm not holding my breath for soul frame but we'll see what wayfinder does this is a totally different game it's still published by de it's more of a cartoony third person shooter it's got some basic abilities you get two or three abilities that type of thing now first impression i'm gonna be honest with you guys and the wayfinder devs because i'm excited about your game first impression was not good and it was for a couple reasons i think the basis of the game as far as abilities and presentation all that's great but there are some things under the hood that were red flags to me you know how sometimes there could be a red flag that is petty but it's still a red flag flag because it could be a reflection of other problems in the future. I had two red flags with Wayfinder, right? The first red flag was in the beta that I played in, there were watermarks everywhere. All Now, I don't know if they just didn't want you to share it or they didn't want the world to see the state that the game was in. If you don't want the world to see what state the game is in, then don't do a beta. No, I, I definitely understand the idea of um, closed betas, but this thing's covered in watermarks. I mean, it, there were so many watermarks in that game. I could barely see what I was doing. And my eyesight, I'm getting older. My eyesight ain't that great it was annoying so that was a red flag for me and the control scheme of the game felt really weird where it felt like it was designed on controller so when i played on mouse and key um you didn't have that smooth directional change where you can go in way more directions than eight it seemed kind of like eight directional thing even though it was on mouse and key it felt like the game was very like strictly i don't know if it was made for keyboard or made for 
controller but it was a very weird feeling that i was like oh, i don't think i like that i would kind of like to see something that transitions I i'm being i told you i was going to be petty anyway i am going to play wayfinder um because i am looking for an online game hence this list that um i think you guys might be interested in all right we spent like five minutes on that i'm so sorry next up path of exile 2 i told you this is not going to be an informed video if you could believe it or not the first online game that I wanted to cover on YouTube was not Warframe, it was Path of Exile 1. I was a founder way back in like 2011, 2012, bought the early beta, whatever it was, and I was like, I'm jumping into this. I grew up with Diablo, let's go. And I ended up playing Warframe and I completely abandoned Path of Exile. Um, I did not play Diablo 4, haven't gotten into that yet, maybe in the near future, as well as Remnant, I haven't gotten into that yet as well. But... I think there's no time like the future. In about a year from now, I think, um, Path of Exile 2 is going to release. Um, I don't know a ton about the game, but I do know that I'm going to play through Path of Exile 1. I probably won't, will not cover it on this channel. And when Path of Exile 2 comes, maybe next year, or maybe there's more information about it, maybe we'll start covering it and talking about it. Because I love, I am from the generation of top-down game. I am from the true Blizzard generation, not this Overwatch, Diablo Immortal generation that we're currently in of from blizzard i played diablo 1 diablo 2 starcraft 1 i have thousands of hours of starcraft land starcraft 1 um yes i'm showing my age here and um i played a bunch of command and conquer games so i'm definitely from a previous generation that loved top down games and um me not playing path of exile 1 is a tragedy and not covering it, especially with that skill tree people get intimidated by that but Man, that skill tree makes me just, I don't know, it, the min-maxer in me is like, yes, that's true min-maxing, and they embrace it. If I'm going to criticize Warframe for anything, they didn't really embrace the almost control of your character that that, that you get in Path of Exile uh, 1. We got this crazy abrasive skill tree, and you can go in any direction, and the combinations of skills and passives and abilities and stats can create some pretty insane things in the far edges of it, right? Like, oh... Um, I, I throw three teddy bears at a time and they explode and feathers fly everywhere and then the whole floor is covered with lava, right? That's the, tr the type of creative expression that you would see in Path of Exile versus, uh, you know, sometimes in Warframe where I criticize, where for instance, you have the Trinity Link thing where you would take damage and then that damage would be projected out onto enemies with the Trinity Link and then the developers went, ah, oh, no, we don't want that. And I was like, no, don't do that. Skill expression is so important in the game like this for certain players. And that's why me personally, I just, you know, when it comes to like these ARPGs and these MMOs, I mean, without any skill progression, I don't really like them. And if we're being totally honest, you know what it's like? I have this um, experience where I went to like an older person's house, right? And they had all of this fancy stuff, the fancy furniture, fancy uh, pictures on the wall, plants. You could barely walk to this place without tripping over something, right? And I thought about it and I'm like, you know what? This is like a lot of modern games where it's pretty to look at, but the developer really doesn't want you to touch anything. Have you ever gotten that vibe from a video game where you do something and suddenly there's a patch and they're like, oh no, we don't want that. Even though it wasn't really the most broken thing in the world, it was just a little bit of skill progression. And maybe instead of removing it, you know, slightly, you know, bring it back down a notch and get players to play within the realm of what your game wants to be. But cutting off uh, skill expression. That's why me personally, that's why I don't even like RPGs. You know, the whole idea I'm ranting now, I told you guys this video is going to be useless. The whole idea to me of a role playing game is you play a role, you get into it, you get involved. I don't think that's what RP, that's why I don't like RPGs. You guys might not know this about me. I have a passionate hate for RPGs because I feel like something that should be more expressive and role playing and something where you should be getting into it, it it's a museum. It's a slideshow. Most RPGs are slideshows. Like you just do what the developer has laid out for you. It's like, what's this? Dude, I can I can go play a single player popular on rails single player adventure game and get just as much player expression and just as much customization as I get in the deepest RPG, like a game like Cyberpunk. 30 minutes into Cyberpunk, I'm falling asleep. I'm like, dude, what's this? This is just a single player. Ugh, we're not going to get into that. Anyway, Soul Frame, Wayfinder, Path of Exile. Um, now, another big one that I know a lot of you guys aren't going to follow me into, unless you watch a lot of my Twitch streams, I play a lot of Apex, is Marathon. I grew up on Halo. I love Bungie. Halo 1, 2, and 3. I didn't really play 4 and 5 once it kind of went off to uh, 
was it gearbox i don't remember um the other company it, it's not coming to me um 343 that's who it was um but i really i really can appreciate what bungie did for the first person shooter as far as creating a smooth well-designed rock paper scissors where you shoot throw grenades you do this and and, and you know it, it's a good experience I, I think nowadays we take for granted the quality of shooters and how a game like halo has infinitely affected its grandchildren of shooters i think nowadays shooters really feel good because of what halo did for the industry and marathon is going to be bungie's newest game uh after they abandoned <laughs> destiny <laughs> destiny players you guys are done i'm just i'm kidding bro don't get mad at me anyway i know a lot of people are upset because they're thinking destiny is about to get abandoned it might be depending on how much money marathon makes just kidding i'm just kidding relax destiny's gonna be fine but um i'm excited about marathon because marathon is essentially gonna be their example or their version of the extraction shooter got a lot of thoughts on this I feel like the extraction shooter is the evolution of the battle royale in the same way that the battle royale is the evolution of the survival game in the same way that the survival game is the evolution of this and on and on. Like all these games are just iterations of each other, right? But I really like the concept of an extraction game, but I don't like any of them. Um, I don't play Tarkov. I, I don't really play. I never play Hunt Showdown. Um, I played the cycle a little bit, but they shut it down. But I have a lot of faith that the extraction shooter is a really nice progression. So essentially the way extract an extraction shooter works is you load into a big map and any loot you take, you can take guns and stuff in with you. It's not like a battle royale where all the guns are kind of like all over the place. You pick them up, you use them, you finish the game. You don't get to keep anything. In an extraction shooter, anything that you kill or take off of other players, you get to keep it. And if you extract with that loot, you get the store that loot or take that loot into another game in the future i like the concept because there's a ton of risk and reward there and i think if you take bungie's 20 25 years i don't know we're getting old here a first person shooter experience of making quality shooters and you apply that to a fairly new concept in the same way i'm going to show you them right here in the same way that epic used the unreal engine um and leveraged that to create fortnite a higher quality of the battle royale genre right I think Bungie can do that with extraction shooters, where a lot of people may look at extraction shooters as almost this niche, almost very PC-like new genre that it, it, there's a lot of like clunky and early access games there. In the same way Fortnite made Battle Royale accessible to the general audience and, and just general society in general, I think Bungie can bring the extraction shooter forward for the casuals, the general audience, the people who may not play games all the time. I have a lot of faith that Marathon could be dope based on uh, Bungie's original IP before Halo. So this thing's like 20, 20 something years old. Um, but I'm excited. I'm going to play a ton of Marathon if it's good. Um, hopefully it's got that kind of Bungie shooter feel to it. Next up. Um, now, you guys might not know this, but I was addicted to fighting games as a youth. As a young Magamu, I played a lot of fighter games. And as I became worse at video games, as I am now, the, the terrible scrub that I am on video games, I abandoned fighter games because honestly, I'm just too bad at them. But um, I think Project L is going to be my attempt, bad attempt, to revisit fighting games. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm deathly afraid to pick up MK11 or Street Fighter 5 or 6 or whatever we're on because I'm, I'm going to get destroyed. Those games have become so complex. They are not Turbo Street Fighter. I just really showed my <laughs> Turbo Street Fighter 2. I just showed my age. Um, fighting games have become a lot more mechanical and, and I'm pretty sure. Um, by the way, Project L. See, I told you this is going to be unprofessional. Project L is a, um, it's a fighting game from Riot who makes League of Legends, of course. It's in, within the same universe, so it's the same characters from League of Legends. Very cartoony. It kind of has that hand-drawn look. Um, we're going to get into cartoony stuff. I prefer the cartoony cell shaded look. I'm actually working on a game that has that look. Um, it's just so easy on my eyes and I like it. So it's a Riot League of Legends uh, fighter, essentially what it is. I'm sure it's going to be very mechanical, so it will probably beat the crap out of me. And I'm going to embarrass myself in the same way I embarrassed myself when um, I got a Switch just to play Smash. Played it for a day, got smashed, and my Switch is on the wall behind me. It probably has three hours of gameplay on the whole doggone device. But... Um, I am going to try to re-enter fighting games and maybe even stream them. And I think Project L, I'm thinking it's going to be free. So um, that's the thing. I think a lot of people are intimidated by fighting games. And may maybe if Project L is free, I don't know. Maybe this may be an entry point for other people to go, you know what? 
I may take the deep dive into trying out a fighting game. You know, it's going to be free to play, so I don't know how that translates to fighting games. Maybe the fighting game community is yelling at me in the comment section like, Mo, shut up, stick to Street Fighter and MK, but I'm going to give it a try. And the last game, well, next to last game, just the online games, is Blue Protocol. I'm going to be honest, I don't know a dog thing about Blue Protocol, and I've been following it for like four years. <laughs> uh, I saw the first trailer. Man, I can't even tell you how long ago it was. I, I think it's an MMO. The only thing I care about Blue, Blue Protocol is it's another online game that I can play with my friends. It's third person. It's got a fantasy sci-fi look to it. It's got a bunch of abilities. It's essentially right up your whole Warframe destiny wayfinder soul frame alley if you like those games i'm thinking this is something that we might check out as gamers on this channel so I told you this video is not going to be helpful you can go look up Bro blue protocol but um again i think it's the aesthetic of blue protocol in the same way that it's the aesthetic of project l for me that i like games like this i think the more games become more realistic i just ugh, i don't like it i don't like i'm not a big fan outside of maybe um remnant remnant looks amazing Remnant 2. Outside of Remnant 2, I'm not really just a big fan of realistic uh, shader, like just the very high fidelity games, especially when they're going for something realistic. Like you can have high fidelity games that are st still kind of surreal and they, they don't they don't have that uncanny valley that just makes you cringe, you know. Um, but I personally like more cartoony games, even if they're high fidelity and high quality. And uh, I like visual clarity in video games. I, I just don't think games need to always emulate the the visual aesthetic of real life because is real life really that great? I mean, we can improve that. The point of video games is to improve on it, right? I thought we were trying to make life cool. Um, now, those are my online games, uh, but finally Starfield. I'm going to be playing Starfield. I'm not really excited about Starfield, to be honest with you, but I'm interested in Starfield. I'm interested in what they do, especially nowadays with um, Fallout 76 being so bad. And then um, what I don't the, the big game, the big space game. You guys know what I'm talking about with that game. Haven't having not really come out. It's an and then, um, man, I am blanking on games right now. No Man's Sky kind of having a resurgence. I think I'm interested in the space genre in general. And for me, no game has really scratched that space genre thing, even though I, I don't think Starfield is an online game, is it? Um, I'm only interested in Starfield because I'm, I want to see what we can do where I can get into a spaceship and fly into a planet. To be honest with you, I probably spend $80 or whatever it is in Starfield I'm going to load up the game. I'm going to get a ship. I'm going to fly to a planet. I'm going to land on it. I'm going to look around, get in the ship, fly to another planet, land on it and uninstall the game. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about the RPG talking to in AI NPCs and the story. I don't care about, I'm going to be honest. This is me personally. This is not you guys. I don't care about any of it. Um, I, I think I'm interested to see what can be done with a space game and flying around and landing on planets. Like, can you please deliver on the thing we should have already gotten? I, I don't know if it's a technology limitation or budgets or creativity, but for me, I have just not gotten that space game. Dude, we only have so much time on this earth. Can you please give me my one outer space game, please? And uh, maybe Starfield will scratch that itch for about 20 minutes and we'll see. Anyway. Those are my five to six games that I may be interested in. If you learn anything from this video, you're doing something wrong because <laughs> that was not the intention. I just wanted to show you, you know, tell you guys what games I'm interested in. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Later.